think it's important for us to not only remember the past, but to imagine and reimagine a future. In the time of Black Lives Matter, new momentum for a different movement that started 50 years ago today. We were watching a next generation come forward and stand up and say, my children will not go through the same thing that my parents went through. Plus, the dramatic rescue in a Colorado Creek to save kids trapped in dangerous water. And I-70 not out of the fire, the warning from CDOT about a new threat that could shut down the interstate once again. We begin tonight with breaking news. Denver police are looking for the driver who caused this three car crash, shutting down all southbound, lane, southbound lanes of I-25 near Yale tonight. One lane is still closed right now. This video shows police arriving at the scene around seven o'clock tonight. The damage to some of those cars, two people were taken to the hospital. Their conditions are not known, but police say the hit and run driver was in a light blue 2010 Hyundai Sonata with a South Carolina license plate. The car also has stickers on the rear window and the bumper. We remember that history. We realize that that struggle continues. As we watch Black Lives Matter protests across our country, Denver's Latino community comes together to take a stand today. Demonstrators here in Denver are remembering something that happened half a century ago. As young people take up the mantle, Denver 7's Lance Hernandez shows how that memory feels more relevant than ever. Today was the celebration of a movement of Latinos standing up for their rights. 50 years ago in Los Angeles, 20,000 people protested against the high casualty rate of Chicanos in the Vietnam War. Several people were killed, including Ruben Salazar, who was a reporter for the Los Angeles Times. He was shot in the head with the tear gas canister while he was sitting in a bar. That force galvanized the Latino community in Denver, which had experienced its own run-ins with police. I think it's important for us to not only remember the past, but to uh, imagine and reimagine a future that is more just and closer to uh, the liberation that I think we've been fighting for. Community members gathered in La Raza Park as part of the National Day of Action Against Racism, Sexism and Fascism. Luis Valdez's grandmother was one of the founding members of La Raza. She was, uh, you know, someone who praised me that when you believe in something, you have to stand up and you have to fight for it. Tony Garcia says the people who were in this park standing up for their rights decades ago are watching younger generations stand up today. And say my children will not go through the same thing that my parents went through and we will create a better world for them, a world where they have opportunities to go choose what happens in their lives without fear of being stopped in the wrong place at the wrong time with being the wrong color. Lance Hernandez. Denver 7. And President Donald Trump will visit Kenosha, Wisconsin Tuesday to meet with law enforcement and see the destruction from recent protests. Buildings and businesses were damaged and cars lit on fire in the days after Jacob Blake was shot by police. Blake was shot when officers were responding to a domestic abuse call nearly a week ago. He is recovering in the hospital, paralyzed from the waist down. CDOT sending out a warning today, be ready for I-70 to close once again. The interstate was closed for two weeks near Glenwood Canyon after being shut down because of the Grizzly Creek fire. It just reopened Monday. The problem is fire destroyed vegetation near the interstate and heavy rains could cause mudslides or rock slides. We are well prepared for closures, so we are watching closely, but we're not necessarily on pins and needles. It's more just making sure that we're ready and able to respond as quickly as possible. So they're saying if you're traveling on I-70 in that area, you should bring an emergency kit and have an alternate route in mind so you don't get stuck. Dramatic video to show you tonight as firefighters wade into dangerous currents to rescue two children. This is in Colorado Springs today. These kids were trapped on a rock in the middle of this creek. Recent storms caused the water level in that creek to rise and obviously some very swift currents. Firefighters were able to bring both children to safety and they were treated by paramedics at the scene and released. The cause sounds good, save the children, but nationally, these rallies have been tied to some bizarre conspiracy theories involving pedophilia and the Democratic Party. Denver 7's Sloan Dickey went to check out a rally here in Denver to see who is really behind it. Our kids are not for sale! Our kids are not for sale! 
to end human trafficking. We're also here to, to make uh, reforming laws against pedophiles. A rally in Denver against unspeakable crimes. I am one in four, and I will not be silent like those before me. Survivors, protesters, and organizers say they have one message. We are here today to take the first steps in to truly saving our children. To save children. Save our children is here, not just to be a voice for our innocent, but to be loud as for them. Yeah. Yeah. Rallies with similar names have sprouted across the country under the banner of protecting children from pedophilia to human trafficking. The Save Our Children movement is not just for our kids here in America. It's for the kids everywhere. The organizer of this rally saying his Facebook group has gained thousands of followers in a matter of days. Within 72 hours, I had 3,000 people in the group. But he says there's one thing his group is not. We are not affiliated with QAnon. QAnon is a fringe conspiracy theory growing in popularity, alleging President Trump is defending America from pedophiles inside the United States government. We don't uh, represent any group of people. Though the organizer of this rally rejected the connection. We are here on our own accord. The conspiracy theories were noticeable. So is this rally in particular, is this drawing attention to something like the QAnon rallies? Possibly, I mean, like that's just, it's hard to say right now. Also visible on several signs were references to other unfounded conspiracy theories, alleging pedophile rings in the Democratic Party. Conspiracies also shared on the Facebook page that organized the event, some posts calling for violence. You have to do your own research and know your own facts and decide for yourself. The QAnon conspiracy theory has spread significantly in recent months, even gaining support from the president. Well, I don't know much about the movement other than I understand they like me very much. Uh, which I appreciate. Protesters at the rally say they're here for one reason. Save our children because it could be yours. Sloan Dickey, Denver 7.